We move on to probably the story of the week so far. A team from Stellenbosch University and the Tigerberg Hospital performed the first successful penile transplant. The operation that took place on the 11th of December last year. Uh, the boy was left with just one centimeter of his original penis during a traditional initiation ceremony. It's believed that more of the boys are disfigured and some die each year during these ceremonies and those who live will need the transplant. Now, to talk to us more about this, we are joined today by Professor Andre van der Merwe, who is the head of Stellenbosch's Division of Urology. Very good morning to you, Dr. van der Merwe. Thank you very much uh, for joining us, and I suppose congratulations is in order. It's been a, it's been a really, uh, a, a really interesting week, I suppose. There's been a lot of hype around the world. Just, uh, just tell us about the kind of, uh, uh, the, the kind of hype that you've seen. I've, I've, I've seen in the, in reports that your office have been inundated with people who want to get the operation now. Yes, it had an incredible effect. I was uh, completely surprised by the effect. Uh, within within uh, hours after the press statement, we had uh, contact from the international media, from international people. And also in South Africa, uh, lots of people, then a lot of private people with genital problems, all sorts of genital problems, not only people with ritual circumcision that is now coming forward, mm -hmm. who's been living uh, in fear uh, for, for years, they, they, they contacted us also people that's been born with the penis people that just got general general problems they, they want to discuss it and obviously it's opened up uh, you know a lot of things here just tell us about the operation itself how it was performed uh, were there any attempts before this one absolutely we we, we draw from an attempt in china in in, in about 10 years ago where, where they attempted to transplant a, a penis to somebody who lost his penis in an industrial accident and uh, unfortunately, at about two weeks or, or less than two weeks, it was removed uh, due to the, the fact that this, the, the skin uh, seemed to have either, either rejected or it was severely uh, necrosing, wasn't looking good. And then the partner of the, of the recipient insisted that the penis be removed. So I, I, uh, we draw from that and, uh, and change our techniques, uh, learning, from, learning from that. In, for, for instance, we had a, a very long psychological workup where we uh, told the patient, uh, you know, what he's in for, what to expect. So the patient was really well prepared. And then, uh, of course, warming up the penis after the operation. We didn't use the infrared lamp that the uh, Chinese used. We, but we had very good blood supply to the penis, mm. thanks to the, the two microsurgeons that, that we contracted. But, but also, um, we gave uh, penile re rehabilitation drugs to this patient to basically rehabilitate the penis at the very early stage. And I think that was the crux of getting such an early return to sexual function that really surprised us. Now, I also see that in, the, in reports in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the recent past that there's now a shortage or you're on the lookout for donors. Have any donors come forward and how do you become a donor? <laughs> yes, I, I was surprised. Uh, I, I had uh, an email from somebody that calls himself Agenda. Uh, in, the, in the United States and uh, is going to remove all uh, you know, organs and they, they're going to do, do this regardless and then they want to donate the penis. But I, I'm a little bit cautious of this. Um, the, the, the way that, that we would uh, contract our donors is somebody that is in an accident and brain dead and mm. would be an organ donor as such. Uh, instead of only asking to, to uh, harvest their kidneys and the heart if, if, if suitable, we will also ask to harvest the, the penis. And this was a problem for us because we always just got no in answer. No, nobody wanted to donate a penis to, uh, you know, and leave a relative without a penis. So what we did for the last one was we offered to reconstruct a penis from the abdominal skin, mm -hmm. or actually from the skin just on the side of, of, of the penis in the lower abdomen. And it, it, it looked really good, and the, and the relatives could rest assured that the patient is going to the grave with somebody that looks very manly, and, uh, and the dignity is not destroyed. Now, quickly, uh, uh, Doc, what about costs and, and, and how will this be classified in the future, do you think, as, a, as emergency or cosmetic surgery? Well, you know, at, at the moment, I, I like to think of it uh, only indicated for people whose quality of life is so severely disrupted 
that they, that they see themselves close to not having a life at all. And this is certainly the case of somebody who lost a, a penis during ritual circumcision, as you probably know some of the, the background of, of, of that and how they feel is a failure yeah. and the whole psychological effect it is on a male losing a penis. So, but, but for, for, for people that just want an enhancement, I, I'm, I'm afraid this, I don't think it's the, it's the operation for, for that. Um, there's a risk uh, for the immune suppression to take. Of course, they can have all sorts of problems for long-term immune suppression. And one have to balance this risk with the advantage of, of having a penis. Therefore, we try to minimize this risk as much as possible. Well, Doctor, you've done a fantastic job. I th I, uh, Professor, I thank you for joining us. That's Professor Andre van der Merwe, who is the head of Stellenbosch University's Division of Urology. They've done the world's first penis transplant, penile transplant, I should say. They did it uh, early in December last year. It's been a success, and it's reverberating all around the world. They're inundated with, well, hundreds and hundreds of requests for this procedure. But let's take a